In a dramatic turn of events, Ferrari has aligned with Red Bull in lodging an official complaint against McLaren's front wing design. The MCL 38's front wing has become a hot topic in the paddock, with both teams adamant that this component gives McLaren a significant advantage over the rest of the grid. The Woking Bay squad has been the only team able to introduce upgrades without hitting a development ceiling, raising eyebrows among F1 experts and team principals alike. But will these complaints be taken seriously by the FIA? And if they are, can McLaren maintain their competitive edge for the remainder of the 2024 season if the front wing undergoes further scrutiny and potential modifications? The rapid development of McLaren has left the entire F1 grid in awe. Not only did they close the gap to Red Bull from the Miami Grand Prix onwards, but they also managed to create a substantial lead over the Austrian team, who had dominated the first five races of the season. Other teams, including Ferrari and Mercedes, have introduced radical upgrades, hoping to boost their performance, but none have matched McLaren's pace. Red Bull, who anticipated a 0.2 second advantage after the Hungarian Grand Prix, found themselves further behind McLaren. Now, with Ferrari joining the call for a review of McLaren's front wing, led by Fred Vasseur, the pressure on the FIA to act has intensified. It's not just the MCL 38 under scrutiny. The W15's front wing flexibility has also caught the attention of both Vasseur and Red Bull's Christian Horner. Extensive discussions with the FIA are expected over the use of flexible wings for the remainder of the 2024 season. These wings have been observed flexing more than the regulations allow, creating additional downforce and improving overall car performance. Despite passing FIA tests, the legality of these wings remains a contentious issue. Helmut Marco of Red Bull has voiced concerns, suggesting that McLaren and Mercedes may be exploiting loopholes in the regulations. The FIA has previously mounted cameras on the front wings to monitor flexing, but recent footage shows the MCL 38 and W15 bending when attacking curbs and on the main straights, aiding tire wear and aerodynamics. Horner has placed the responsibility squarely on the FIA, stating, the regulations are clear and this isn't an FIA issue. Our wings pass the test, but the wording of the regulations needs to be examined. If it's acceptable, then we have to join the game. Red Bull insists their front wing is incomparable to McLaren's, which may explain the sudden shift in performance between the two teams. Ferrari's support for Red Bull's complaint further strengthens their case. This situation mirrors the controversy surrounding Mercedes DS system in 2020, which was eventually banned in 2021 despite being deemed illegal in the same season it was introduced. The controversy surrounding McLaren's front wing has not only sparked debates among teams, but has also captivated fans and analysts alike. The aerodynamic intricacies of F1 cars are often shrouded in mystery, and the MCL 38's front wing has become the latest enigma. The design, which appears to flex under certain conditions, has led to speculation about its legality and effectiveness. The FIA's role in this saga cannot be understated. As the governing body of Formula One, the FIA is responsible for ensuring that all teams adhere to the regulations. However, the interpretation and enforcement of these rules can sometimes be subjective, leading to disputes like the current one. The FIA's decision on McLaren's front wing will set a precedent for future aerodynamic innovations and could have far-reaching implications for the sport. The involvement of Ferrari adds another layer of complexity to the situation. As one of the most storied teams in F1 history, Ferrari's opinions carry significant weight. Fred Vasseur's skepticism about the MCL 38's legality suggests that Ferrari is not willing to let this issue slide. Their support for Red Bull's complaint indicates a united front against what they perceive as an unfair advantage. Meanwhile, McLaren remains confident in the legality of their design. The team has consistently passed FIA tests, and they argue that their front wing complies with the regulations. McLaren's resurgence this season has been nothing short of remarkable and they are determined to defend their position. The team's engineers have worked tirelessly to develop a car that can compete at the highest level, and they believe their efforts should be recognized rather than penalized. Mercedes is also placing its hopes on the FIA, urging the governing body to take decisive action beyond merely mounting cameras on the front wings of cars. Elaborating on this matter, the Frenchman stated, this is a discussion I don't want to have with the media.
I will have it with FIA single-seater director Nicholas Tambazas. We must respect the FIA's decision and deal with it internally. However, this situation is far from acceptable for Red Bull. The team has admitted to taking a wrong turn in their development curve and now pointing fingers at McLaren, who have outdeveloped them mid-season, does not bode well for their future. Verstappen candidly expressed that with their current pace, they won't win any races until the end of the season. Meanwhile, Helmut Marko remains hopeful, expecting the team to be competitive again in Austin come October. The next two races in Baku and Singapore could be pivotal in the championship battle. Verstappen is expected to lose more ground to Norris and potentially to Leclerc and Piastri, who are also pushing hard from behind. Marco spoke about Verstappen's admission regarding the RB20 in Monza, stating, Max recognized on Sunday where the weaknesses of the car are. Together with the engineers, a decision was made on how to improve the car and make it competitive again. We just need to find out which part made the car worse. If we knew that, we wouldn't be in this situation. Red Bull's experiments will continue in the upcoming races in Baku and Singapore, as these tracks are not favorable for the RB20. If the pecking order remains as it was in Monza, it could spell disaster for Verstappen and Red Bull, who might drop to P3 in the Constructors' Championship and lose their lead to Norris in the Drivers' Championship. The only hope for Red Bull is that McLaren's front-wing flexibility might be deemed illegal, potentially returning McLaren to the midfield, or at least making them the second fastest car. Ferrari's recent upgrade package in Monza, particularly their tire management strategy with Leclerc driving 38 laps on one stint, shows that Red Bull might face challenges from other teams besides McLaren. On the other hand, Red Bull and Ferrari can be somewhat relieved that McLaren's internal team dynamics are not fully sorted, while Andrea Stella admitted that team orders might be necessary for Norris to win the championship, McLaren CEO Zach Brown disagrees. Brown compared the current situation to the Senna Prost era at McLaren, stating, they're both young drivers who want to win. We've always believed in having two number ones. It can be difficult to manage, but we've seen it with Senna and Prost. They get along great and race each other clean. It's philosophical. Are you a one-car team or a two-car team? The Hungarian Grand Prix highlighted this tension as Norris led the race due to a strategy error that disadvantaged Piastri. McLaren justified their decision on the teammate card, but Piastri has shown he won't respect any rules when he has a chance to win. If McLaren wants to compete for the Drivers' Championship, they must sort out this number one situation, as Norris and Piastri are not far ahead of the rest of the grid. With all this in mind, do you think the front wing of the MCL 38 is illegal? Do you believe there are more changes to come in the remainder of the 2024 season, especially after the requests made by Red Bull and Ferrari? We'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of Formula One and want to stay updated with the latest news, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Keep the pedal to the metal and we'll see you at the next race.